I am taking a hammering right now from the people of London, from the intellectual elites, as they call themselves. It's rather like your kind of New York or L.A., I guess. And I take a hammering from them because they say, we stand united, we are stoic, we are not cowed. Whereas if you travel outside of London to this other place called the rest of the UK, where I am in regularly with people who are normal people getting on with their daily lives, they do feel afraid, not afraid because of this one attack or this one man in this car that drove into people and stabbed a man, not afraid because of this one thing, but because they look at what our country has become, because this is us now, this is the United Kingdom now, you know, this is what we've been reduced to, which is accepting another attack, accepting this sort of thing happens in a big city. That was our Muslim mayor, Sadiq yeah, Khan, who right. said that. Yeah. Accepting that what we'll do now, if people are right this moment, is stand in Trafalgar Square, hold a tea light, you know, make heart shapes with your hands, maybe mm -hmm. have a hashtag, maybe mm -hmm. light up a building with the colours mm -hmm. of the flag, and pretend it's all okay. That is not brave, you know, that is not not being cowed by terror. That's failing to see the danger in our midst that nobody's doing anything about. And the rest of the UK can see it, but our establishment, our media, the liberal ruling elite in London just won't acknowledge it. And I believe they won't acknowledge it because to admit the state that we've fallen into would be to admit everything they believe is wrong. You know, multiculturalism doesn't work. Multiculturalism means we all die together. Mm, I agree with every word you've just said, and it's not often that I am speechless, and I'm not speechless now because so many ideas have come to me as you were speaking, Katie. I was thinking of the Battle of Britain during World War II, after uh, London had been bombed. The Royal Air Force sent up the Spitfires against the, the ME-109s. They didn't light candles or release balloons where the people were burnt to death after Hitler firebombed parts of London. They fought back. It's why I've always admired the British, was the fighting spirit. Where is the fighting spirit in England today? Where did it go? Absolutely. And this is the thing that people seem to be missing when I'm saying to them, you are cowed, you are afraid, because all right. you've got is acceptance. All you've got that you're fighting back with is a hashtag and a tea light. All you've got to fight back with is, ooh, but the far right are equally scary, or ooh, there's worse <laughs> happening in Germany, or ooh, Brussels is just as bad. That is not fighting back. People say to me, look, Katie, you know, we will stand strong against this. London is better than this. We survived the Blitz. We survived yeah, right. the IRA. But you know what? We were fighting for something then. We were defending ourselves then. We sent brave men and women out to fight for a cause then. And all we have now is a Muslim there saying, these sorts of things happen in a big city. We are united. And I tell you, that is as far from the truth as it could possibly be. I have never known a more divided kingdom, and I also have never known London to be more divided. It is basically a city of ghettos. There is the Somali quarter, the mm -hmm. Afghani quarter, who don't speak to the Eritrean quarter, who don't mm -hmm. speak to the Syrian. And that's very, very, you know, well demarked. Those sort of communities are demarked by strong lines that exist. That is the truth of London. And that's the truth that, for some reason, our media are not willing to acknowledge, very much like Sweden, in fact. Well, you, you recently had a Brexit vote. It sort of showed the schism in Britain, uh, or in England, for that matter. The, the schism was between uh, London and the rest of the nation. And, and then they have the travesty of the Muslim Mayor Khan, who, ever, if ever there was a fellow traveler, it seems like... Let me, let me put it in, in a crude analogy. It's World War II... Hitler has just sent one of his henchmen into London to kill some people innocently with a truck, and the mayor is of German descent, and he says, London is the safest city in the world, and we're all united. The people would say, well, which side is he on? I mean, that's what you're feeling. Katie, what is your background that you stand so apart from the other, quote, journalists in London or in England? How did you get where you are? 
Yeah, and I think it's because I'm not one. You know, I am just this normal <laughs> woman. I'm just a mum of three kids of 12, 11, and 8. You know, I live 10 years in Manhattan, so I understand, you know, life can be a bit tough and we all need to be a bit tough. You know, Manhattan doesn't have maternity leave more than six weeks on paid leave. <laughs> I quite like that. I like the fact that you guys go, hey, you wanted a baby? Great. You pay for it. I love that. You know, I buy into that. <laughs> So, look, all my life when I was little, I wanted to be in the army. I am a massive patriot. I love my country. I would love to do what uh, Trump did. And I stood there at his inauguration just loving the fact that he said, we will put America first. And I went through Sandhurst. I had a regular commission with the Intelligence Corps. I was oh. part of the army because I want to fight for something. And what breaks my heart is all of these people saying, look, we're not cowed because we're still walking down a pavement. We're not cowed because, look, we're still in a restaurant drinking. I mean, oh, my word, you brave Brits, yeah. you're still eating and drinking. I mean, <laughs> oh, you're still doubly continent as well. Go you, you're still continent, stoically continent. But actually, no one's fighting back. No one's acknowledging the problem we have. And all we have is a Muslim mayor, as you rightly say, standing up at the leading the vigil with the candlelight yeah. in this public square, which luckily is uh, well, he's a, he's a In my opinion, he's a fellow traveler of extremism, whether he is openly or closet, in a closeted manner. He's winking and nodding. But the question is, we heard a UKIP leader, Paul Nuttall, saying today, ban funding for mosques. He said there's a cancer within our community in this country that has to be called out and has to be dealt with whether that is calling on the Muslim community to do more to cut this cancer out. Or he said, uh, how about banning Saudi funding of mosques because, quite frankly, Saudi Arabia spread radicalism around the globe. I think you would agree with that, correct? I think, yeah, absolutely. And I see that uh, at my university, actually, a local university here, um, that is uh, a lot of funding on that campus now. This is true of many of our British universities, comes from uh, the Saudis. And as a result, um, campuses now are not friendly to the Jewish communities, and Jews are being forced out of university campuses and other thinking because there's such a wide um, sort of spread prevalence of Islamic thinking, Islamic thought, which is indeed backed by funding from Saudi uh, sources. That's in our universities with our young people. And I believe people are also being brainwashed in our schools and colleges to be anti-Trump. You know, many teachers teach in schools that Trump equals hate, and they think they have a right to teach that. You know, it concerns me. I think our Muslim mayor of Londonistan, as many of us know, is, you know, his greatest kind of validation is that his father was the son of a bus driver. And, you know, have we heard that once? We've heard it 40,000 times. Um, so, yes, uh, United Kingdom is not united. And we certainly, when people say we will not be cowed, that's because the bravery bar has now been set at walking down the pavement or crossing a bridge. And if that's brave, <laughs> to wonder what sort of your country is in. All right. Well, I've asked my audience today on this program, what would you recommend to be done to reduce Islamo-fascist terror in the West? And we've been talking about that. And also, by the way, we're speaking with a great writer, Katie Hopkins, UK Daily Mail, on Twitter, at KT Hopkins. Uh, you're impassioned, you're patriotic, you are what England needs right now, and you're not alone. You represent the English people. The very force of England that voted to remove themselves from the uh, emerging Soviet Eurostate and to leave the EU are the people you seem to write for, Katie. And what do they think needs to be done to save their nation before it's too late? Can't, let's make a bigger picture. I have people who are very smart, smarter than I, who said they can't be saved. It's too late. The breeding level, the reproduction level, the encouragement of breeding amongst the immigrant classes and the lack of children amongst the British themselves means that in 20 years or less, they will be slaves to the invaders. Is that too dire a picture? I don't think it is too dire a picture. And if it were only I saying it, I would say, well, you know, be a bit skeptical. 
political because obviously I'm biased because I'm a massive Brexiteer. I stand with the 52. I am proud of the people who want to try to get back to a Britain they used to know. But when I hear Erdogan in Turkey saying we are at war, this is a war between the crescent and the cross, and that was only last week he was saying that, I tend to think that's right. And I can only see a full-scale civil war at some point breaking out. You know, I think the real sadness is not that we are the cross against the crescent, but actually we are kind of bent down on one knee. You know, we're so busy trying to be tolerant that we're a doormat now, a country that's a doormat to be trodden on, a joke, really, to these other countries that take us over. And it's only funny to those who wish us harm, many celebrating the attacks yesterday on Arabic social media channels. And I think what fears us the most is this idea that, you know, it's the cultures that come to join us that they, we tiptoe around instead of defending the culture that people have come to join. Yeah, what, whatever happened to the adage, when in Rome do as the Romans do, where'd that go? I don't know, you know, and it's one of my big questions, maybe a question for your good listeners as well, is why is it, if Islam is so great, why do Muslims always want to come to Christian countries? That's a question I haven't managed to find an answer to. Perhaps. Well, there's better welfare and an easier, easier society to uh, dominate. I think it's quite simple. If you lived in a repressive society ruled by a potentate, uh, 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 albeit of the same religion, wouldn't you like to go to a place that is ruled by ninnies, such as Theresa May, who says we're all you know? Well, what's with her, by the way? It, it, it's so disappointing. It, it's really disappointing for for people like me, the 52, the Brexiteers, the people that were championing Trump because we hoped America would be able to break free, and America has. And I can only tell you, there are so many Brits here who aspire to be like the Americans, the Americans who said, no, we will not be called deplorables. No, we will not be told mm -hmm. we cannot win. No, we will stand, and we will mm -hmm. put Americans first, and we will have American jobs for American people. You know, mm -hmm. God only knows I wish Trump had come out of the door of number 10 last night, because that's the message. I would want it to have heard, not that we will not be cowed, that we stand united, and as proof <clears throat> that we're all going to manage to turn up to work tomorrow and somehow still be confident. Yeah, right. That's not well, as I said on the show, after a terrorist attack, what I want to hear is the buzzing in the middle of the night. That is really the roar of B-2 bombers coming out of McClellan Air Force Base on the way to the training camps because we damn well know that everyone in the military and intelligence knows where these people come from and they could obliterate them virtually with the press of a button. I'm so sick of this. I know that you probably have to go. You're a, you're a kindred spirit. I don't know if you know this. I'm the only member of the American media banned from entering Britain. Are you aware of that? I do know that, and I can only apologize, <laughs> and I can only... <laughs> no, no, I didn't think you anyone even remembered that. That's my badge of courage here, is I'm not allowed to enter a nation that I happen to still love, despite the fact that it's been invaded by a, a virus... Uh, like this. Can you stay with us a few minutes after the break, Kenny, or you have to run along? No, no, I can stay with you, huh? You see that? She loves me, as do my listeners. At least on the radio. She's a married woman, as am I. We'll be right back with the great Katie Hopkins on the Savage Nation. <laughs> 